this quiet offense, Slamesh! Porn for the porn god, smut for the smut throne, rape for the rape train. The motto that Slanesh wants you to believe in. To be loved, feelings must be rationed. To love, the doors of hysteria, fantasy, and madness may be flung open. Anton Lave, Tez gratify a savage nature, they do not melt it. Pabilia Cyrus. God doesn't love you. Not like I do. Val, Outlast 2, an oasis of horror in a desert of boredom. Charles Baudelaire. Everything is good when it is excessive. Don H. E. Alphonse Franzois, Marquis de Chardé. There is more pleasure in loving than in being beloved. Thomas Fuller. Introduction The Slanesh Inquisition. Behold Slanesh, Chaos God of Perversion. Hente. Shamelessness. Excess. The most disgusting pop music in the history of ever. Heretical farty GUYS cannot resist the most disgusting heresy of masturbating furiously to Slanesh and his herdemonets. Slanesh was born in the 1800s, when scenes trick major film producers to establish a colony in the anarchistic frontiers of California where they could practice their most lecherous vices at the fall of the elder, when all their torture, rape, SM, bondage, decadence, eventually tore the fabric of reality a new one and gave birth to Slanesh along with the Eye of Terror killing the majority of their race. Thus, the final chaos god is known as the one that was literally murder fucked into existence. As a result, Slanesh owns almost every last elder soul in the entire galaxy. In the event of an elder dying without a spirit stone, she becomes Slanesh's sex toy for all of eternity day and night forever and ever excluding exodites, whose soul will automatically go to their planet's world spirits and holoquins, who are scooped up by the great clown himself. That is why Elder are willing to manipulate entire worlds into exterminating each other just to save one of their own. The Dark Elder takes this up to 11 by sacrificing other souls to Slanesh so that they don't get eaten. Korn hates Slanesh because S is a prissy faggot, but Slanesh doesn't care about Korn, or any of the other chaos gods, until S he's done playing with his hair the let's go with itself. Which is about 1 nanosecond every millennium, so about 13 nanoseconds total so far. Rumors that their relationship is beyond hate and occasional angry sex are just that. Korn is not telling though Mork and Gork are alluding to some exceedingly voracious tales. Of course, that paragraph is Slanesh's Warhammer 40k history. In Warhammer Fantasy Battles, Slanesh has no real backstory and sort of just came out of nowhere like the other chaos gods. Among other things, Slanesh is the god of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. He she it is fueled by excess and pleasure, which means gratuitous amounts of anything generally fall under its influence. This actually becomes a big problem for Korn, the god emperor of mankind and the other chaos gods, whose worshippers have to constantly try not to enjoy themselves too much lest they end up feeding the warp's whipping bitch. Especially when the inquisition is all too enthusiastic about whipping heretics. Many horny juveniles who have just found Warhammer seem to be obsessed with Slanesh being a goddess of sexual pleasure. While Fluff claims this is not true, in practical terms Slanesh is a deity of pleasure, which can be broad. Pleasure can be derived from various sources, as such this can be anything from sex, eating, companionship, and so on and so forth. However, because chaos is chaos, Slanesh is mostly associated with the extremes of pleasure, lechery, gluttony, extreme masochism, and the likes, are the pleasures his herits followers partake in because Slanesh's credo is to experience everything to the fullest. This basically means why settle for one loving wife to have sex with you when you can have a hive world of loving concubines to satiate your desires? Or why eat one disgustingly expensive luxury meal when you could eat a paradise world supply of the stuff? Why just resort to cutting yourself to feel the pleasure of pain when you could be chopping off lumps of your flesh to heighten the sensation of pain? One would think that if, as claimed, Slanesh was the lord of all pleasure then Slanesh would be omnipotent because, in the end, Biological and psychological fact tells us that every living thing with a fucking neuron does anything simply because to feel pleasure and escape pain the pleasure principle. Even Korn, her is its opposite, feels pleasure in killing, and Sinch feels pleasure in just as planned. That is why 40k lore tends to focus on Slanesh as a god of the most disgusting pleasures ever, not as a god of all pleasure. Additionally, in the fluff, 
It does state that most pleasures like regular love or the desire to eat that might be covered under the pleasure principle are too weak to sustain Slanesh. Slanesh being usually named the god of excess it's more that Ishii gains power from overindulging in the small things like sex and eating. Considering that it's damn hard for anyone to get more than a piece of stale toast and a dry hand job before a grueling 48 hours of avoiding death in the name of the emperor in the far corner of some forgotten forge world. The only way to get enough sex, drugs, and partying and to impress Lana Shawn your average imperial world is to be a ruthless, controlling, evil, bastard. It is worth noting that GW seems to have picked up somewhat on this fact. As of the latest Demon Codex it does mention that Slanish has a particular way of influencing the other Chaos Gods and that they are all weary of Ishiad given that Ishiad does draw some strength from the extreme behaviors they promote in their followers and are subject to themselves. Slanesh and his herits worshippers will be Yifts in Hell. Alright, eh, which one of you guys let the commissar in here? My bad. Yift in Hell, you say? Oh 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 It sounds so exciting. Sign me in. Grammar alone was heretical. Someone get a Mechanicus to set up a turret. Slanesh is also associated with the arts and creativity, as creativity means pursuing one's own personal desires. Self-indulgence and personal expression are the bedrock of the arts, after all. Those attracted to Slanesh could theoretically be more than just aristocratic ravers, but also particularly eccentric artists, writers, etc. Slanesh's sex drugs, and rock roll in the purest sense of the word, not just the orgy after the concert, but the brilliant concert that caused the orgy to begin with. One could assume that, in order to prevent Slanish's influence from spreading, the Imperium of Man would censor not just content but style, a radically structured poem, a painting with hints of sexual content, even a deviation from traditional chord structures would presumably bring the Inquisition to your doorstep. If Slanish had a voice actor, it would be Tim Curry. What? Warhammer? In the new age of Sigma setting, Slanesh has gone missing. Tyrion and Malerian work together to capture Slanesh, unknowingly helped along by the machinations of Tsinch. Thus Slanesh has been removed from the pantheon of chaos and replaced by the horned rat. Derp while it was thought Slanesh is being kept in a hidden warehouse while Tyrion works him her over to make Slanesh give back Aelothra's soul, this is revealed to be mostly true. There was speculation that Slanesh has been removed as an active part of Age of Sigma in some attempt by Games Workshop to make the game more accessible to children. Somehow, they failed to take into account that an incredibly grim dot game with very complicated rules and such a high price of entry isn't going to be popular among kiddies anyways. They may be doing this so parents won't be put off by the game and be willing to buy it for their children and to get past the media watchdogs to make the game more mainstream. But that most likely won't work due to reasons discussed on GW's page here. Yet hope for Slanesh faction lovers still remains. With Slanesh missing, his forces have split between those trying to find and free Slanesh that refer to themselves as seekers. Those who are trying to claim their former master's position they are referred to as pretenders and consists of every chaos lord and keeper of secrets that wants to claim their former masters. Position as the new god of depravity and those who have continued to be allied to Archaeon and his wars against the mortal realms who are referred to as invaders. This last faction is currently the biggest and is the main Slanesh force fighting order. It is mostly being led by Slanesh's greater demons who led Slanesh's demonic and mortal followers but some have actually looked to venerating Archaeon as their replacement deity. With the release of the daughter of Cain Battletoe it's revealed that Slanesh have been trapped in the void space between Olgi realm of shadows and Hish realm of light by the collective work of Tyrion and Teclis, now gods of the Hish, Malirian, god of shadow, and Morathi. There the elf gods are slowly taking back the elf souls the chaos god had devoured after the end times, reforging them to their liking, while Slanesh is trapped in a position that will make it impossible for it to escape. That is, unless Morathi cast a spell to get more souls than it was initially planned for her to receive, a spell that would weaken the chains that are keeping Slanesh trapped, which of course she did. Now Slanesh is ever so slowly getting further from Hish and closer to Algu, which enabled Slanesh's followers to learn where Ishi was. The only things standing in their way are the fact that they can't reach Slanesh's prison, the elf gods and their forces. Even then, Slanesh might eventually be able to free itself. The first depiction of Slanesh in Warhammer art. Slanesh imprisoned unable to decide which dildo to use first. Slanesh is effectively neutralized. Ingenious. Followers.
Slanesh attracts mortal followers from those seeking to become charismatic and popular, but instead corrupts them to become colossal perverts. Alternatively, she may attract followers from those who are already colossal perverts, and corrupt them to become more charismatic and popular. Just as planned. Alternatively, Slanesh sometimes finds those in the mortal realm with far more looks than brains to approach and give them everything they could ever want because she tells them that they simply deserve it. With nothing expected in return, other than them turning into a colossal egotistical hedonist with no sense of responsibility, right and wrong, or empathy as they fuck over creation on whim or for the lulls due to the ultimate entitlement complex possible. Slanesh and Korn actually compete for the same pool of followers more often than you'd think, which is part of their bitter rivalry. A good rule of thumb is this, if a warrior wants to be the best, gets his thrills from making that perfect shot, that perfect move, that perfect 360 noscope, to hone his or her skills as sharp as they can ever be. Or debasing their foes, their Slanashi. If the thrill lies in just killing people, the pure joy of murder, and the skill is just a way of facilitating that, they acorn it. Slanashi types also get off on the sensory overload rather than actual killing, even pain. See the Emperor's children who get carved up by Raven Guard and won't fight back because the feeling of lightning claws dicing them up is too damn blissful. They also get off on the reactions they get from others for example, the loyalist who Lucius tricks into slaughtering his own men. When things come to more social followers, Slanesh competes with Siege, as followers are both are known for being a silver-tongued manipulative dicks with a huge hard-on for power. Here the difference lies in that Slanashi followers seek power for their own gain, usually through charismatic speeches and the like. While Sinchians often have more altruistic goals or are more interested in a process of gaining power than actually getting it, intentionally raising the challenge to impossible level just to feed their ambitions, for which they'd use the exchange of favors, blackmail, and other such forms of social politicking. The huge hard-on part is also much more literal in Slanesh's case. Apart from the obvious, Slanesh and Nurgle rarely have any interaction, although there was the matter of the cutie elder wafer Nurgle stole from Slanesh, but otherwise, their domains are too different. Those who are ambitious and feel they deserve better choose Slanesh, while those who give up or accept their lot fall into Nurgle's open, sweaty arms. Conflict occurs, but love of the self and love of others aren't as mutually exclusive as the desire to destroy and the desire to create, or a demand for the spotlight against careful orchestration. Demonettes, hideous crab clawed hermaphrodites or seductive scythe clawed elf girls depending on which fluff you choose to believe. Fat guys love demonettes and spend much time eagerly awaiting the draw fags to provide them with more heresy. Some fluff seems to suggest that they're hot elf girls until they decide it's time to rip your face off, at which point they become something more akin to the BDSM glam rock black eyed lobster women seen in the current models. Moreover, they're supposedly attractive to the beholder though these are often xenophobic assholes and thus only consider themselves beautiful. This means that it is very likely that their appearance is entirely subject to the individual desires of whomever is perceiving them. This is represented by their hermaphroditic androgynous appearance, supposedly rendering them attractive regardless of preference or sexuality. Their monstrous nature is a juxtaposition of slender sensuality and horrible, flesh-tearing demonic claws. Like many demons, their appearance is supposed to be highly varied, which is never represented in the models unless you combine all the old and new, modify heavily, and use proxies randomly. Demonettes are created by Slanish's waking thoughts, popping into existence as she contemplates trolling corn, destroying a civilization from within, or getting off. Seekers of Slanish. Demonettes mounted upon steeds of Slanish which are the mix of an aardvark and a raptor dinosaur. Fast and lots of attacks for not much points, prone to dying in a hail of arrow bolt of fire. Fiends of Slanesh, large creatures that look like a bizarre cross between an aardvark and a scorpion with rows of breasts. These are created when Slanesh dreams because apparently chaos gods sleep. They're basically if a demonet and a seeker had a child. Seeker chariots of Slanesh, hard hitting unit squad wipe models. This is whom you call for when you need that pesky tarpet removed. Right now, from other end of the board. Be cautious though, these things need protection like grimoire and preferably invisibility, or at least target mitigation to live long enough to do their job since they are big targets with juicy 10 armor all round. Also never ever position yourself so that the enemy could have even remote chance of charging these things. Even squad of retarded fire warriors or some spearmen can take these chariots down in melee if they get the charge. These things live and die by the hammer of wrath attacks, use them accordingly. Also comes in the exalted seeker chariot variant, which is literally just a larger seeker chariot crewed by high ranked demonettes. 
Health Flare Chariots of Slanish. What happens when you combine enough chariots to make demonets literally dripping with excitement of being in battle? Warriors of Chaos. Not Vikings Mongols who live in the desolate north of Warhammer Fantasy and fight against each other when not raiding the rest of the world. The closer to the warp gates they are, the more like living demons while the furthest south are generally only concerned with survival and not offending gods. Beastman. The rapist omnivorous in every sense of the word animal mutants that infest the world. Beastmen serve all of chaos. Some serve specific gods more than others but few serve one entirely. Live to literally and canonically shit on civilization and order. Ironically treated like shit by all of the rest of chaos. Slanish, in keeping with the trend, allows his followers to fuck their women and drink their wine. Keepers of secrets, Slanesh's greater demons, like a demonette on steroids, ecstasy and Viagra, created intentionally from Slanesh's own darkest thoughts and desires, rather than the demonette seeker's fiends which are created passively. Each is radically different even though there's only been three different models, one of which is long out of production. Genius is capable of turning entire armies to their side, or destroying civilizations. The default leaders of almost any Slanesh army, unless led by a Demon Prince, a human with one elf as the exception so devout to Slanish that they managed to become a demon. In fantasy this is usually, but not always, a Warriors of Chaos champion who made the perilous journey of getting not too little or too much attention while in her service. In 40k, these are always. Chaos Space Marines, the traitor marines of the 3rd Legion worship Slanish exclusively, as do warbands such as the Angels of Ecstasy and the Flawless Host. They also make up a large chunk of the Black Legion, as the Children of Torment, Noise Marines, the specialist traitors dedicated to Slanish, akin to Korn's Berserkers, Nurgle's Plague Marines or Tsinch's Thousand Sons, Oral Focus traitors who specialize in using sonic weaponry because the cacophony is the only thing that can register on their jaded senses anymore. Drachii. The Warhammer fantasy evil elves who are the highest ranking worshippers of Slanesh, who they call Shornal, in the cult of pleasure. In most of the game's history 4 editions out of 8 total, the first two having virtually no story whatsoever, Dark Elves had their origin in their Queen Morathi being the High Priestess of Slanesh, who corrupted her son and about half the elf race. While most Dark Elves torture and kill in the name of Cain, Morathi led a cult of Chaos Elves and regularly allied with other Slanishy factions other than Beastmen. Because Morathi kept her own as pets and shits on all others like a good Chaos character should. In later editions, Chaos Elves were retconned away into worshippers of Athati, Ikati, and Aerith Keel, three elven Slanish XP gods, in order to redo the Dark Elf faction as evil elves who ally with other elves in the interest of mutual survival instead of evil elves who just want to watch the world burn while a slave whose skin has been torn off gives their moral. This choice split many fans, some asking why elves should worship Slanish when they have Cain instead of Korn, others asking why they worship Cain when Korn is better. Facts? Ilid is secretly Slanish. Sanguinius is jealous of Slanish because him her it is the only one more fabulous than he. Slanish wants to fuck the emperor, but every time he she it tries, the biggie psychically bitch slaps him her it. Destroys all his her it's sex toys and sex slaves and breaks his her it's hand so he she it can't fat for a while. The emperor bitch slaps Slanish so hard he she it can't do anything sexual for a while. This makes Slanish sad, and horny, and orgasm. Slanesh knows that you can't spell happiness without penis. Slanesh is dyslexic. Slanesh also knows that you can't spell dyslexic without sex. The title of Slanesh's greatest mortal champion is owned by Shortman. Slanesh turns all his her followers into the opposite sex. Slanesh's demonettes possess men and then jack off. Slanesh is bitching over the fact how his her its only representation in the Dao series was the Emperor's children paint scheme. And they aren't even Slanishy like, they're just a generic chaos army. Although, he did grant favor to Elophus for smashing a ton of soul stones, and their colors aren't even correct. However, concerning stated above, the developers have added noise marines for Dawn of War 2 Retribution. This has made Slanesh quite happy. However, he she it is still pissed off of not getting enough representation offended by the silence, considering Nurgle gets Plague Champion Hero, the Plague Marine Tier 2 unit, and the epic Great Unclean 1 Demon. Korn then gets the Cornered Chaos Lord, 
Bloodlotters and Bloodcrushers, while Siege gets the Sorcerer Hero. Has the most effective upgrade for the basic CSM squad warp fire bolts make everything in front of them shit bricks and was flat out broken in earlier versions of its introduction. And all of the anti-armor upgrades, while he shield only gets a single unit that frankly eclipsed by either plague marines or generic havocs with an auto cannon. Charlie Sheen is his herit's first true demon prince though he was recently diagnosed with it which resulted from his sex capades. But just like Fulgrim his body probably needs to be destroyed first before he can ascend. Slanesh gets beaten up off by all of the other chaos gods on a fairly regular basis, and gets off on it. If it exists, Slanesh faps schlicks slaps to it. Siege likes to trick Slanesh into fighting corn to get his daily dose of loves. Slanesh always loses these fights pretty badly, and each time, Slanesh takes it pretty hard, and this pleases him her it. Slanesh is secretly depressed that Ishiat has no friends. Korn is a dick, and Siege is the biggest dick there is. Nurgle is nice, but Slanesh can't get over the fact that he cucked him her it. Can't get over it in both a positive and negative sense. Also, Nurgle has all the STDS, which would make him Slanesh's natural enemy out in the wild. Isha's immunity to all diseases is better than any protection, which is a pretty substantial reason why Slanesh liked her. Slanesh gets bullied by all the other chaos gods constantly because none of them like him her it. This does not upset the balance, though, because Slanesh likes BDSM whereas he was being bullied and tortured by the other chaos gods. Slanesh is Tsinch's second favorite victim for his hijinks, because it's oh so easy to string him along with offers of porn, whores, BDSM and or drugs. Korn regularly tears off Slanesh's arms and beats him her it over the head with them again, this inadvertently makes Slanesh orgasm. Slanesh was using steroids when Hishia killed the Elder Gods, Hishia couldn't really beat them all without using performance enhancing drugs, at least at what came, a god of war and destruction. Keeps insisting whenever someone asks him why he got both figuratively and possibly literally raped by a god goddess of sex drugs and rock'n'roll. Slanesh is always on drugs except psychiatric medication, they kill sex drive down to the very biology. Slanesh attempted to fight the Nightbringer in a desperate attempt to win back some street cred. Yishiat got his herit's left boob cut off for his herit's trouble. It hurt so bad good that it retroactively cut off the left boobs of all of Slanesh's greater demons and that's why they all only have one boob or six. Given the new backstory and his herit's time of birth, this means that Slanesh lost against a Necron Pokemon. Slanesh is a great patron of the arts. His herit's favorite films include Hellraiser Slanesh's number one film. In fact, Ishii took a lot of inspiration on many of the movie's aspects, that is, of course, a lie. He actually ripped off Hellraiser. Hellraiser ripped him her off. Slanesh had a cameo appearance in the sequel dressed as a lozenge. A Serbian film Slanesh's second favorite movie, S.E.'s already started putting newborn porn into her his daily schedule. Pink Flamingo's Slanesh's third favorite movie, which is actually a film adaptation of Slanesh's daily journal. It shows parts of Slanesh's daily life such as bestiality, scat fetishes and for the actors in that scene had sex with each other while crushing a real life chicken to death between them. Fortunately the cannibalism was fake. Slanesh especially enjoyed that the movie quotes him her directly blood does more than turn me on, it makes me come. And more than the sight of it, I love the taste of it. The taste of hot, freshly killed blood. Kill everyone now. Condone first degree murder. Advocate cannibalism. Eat shit. Filth are my politics. Filth is my life. Take whatever you like. This was an actual line from the movie, The Things I Do For You People, and that an deceased drag queen played the main character. A Clockwork Orange one of Slanesh's favorite movies. Not so much the book it was adapted from as it was less about sex and more a commentary on the nature of morality. Although Slanesh faps schlicks to commentaries on morality too. He she it likes to jerk off at many of the movie's aspects, but more notably Malcolm McDowell's sexy face. He she it also finds the death of one of the characters totally hilarious, due to the the fact that said character was killed by a giant rocking ceramic phallus straight to the face. Blow job of death. Lulz. Unbelievable and improbable. Well here's evidence to prove it giant rocking ceramic phallus attack. The Rocky Horror Picture Show mostly because of Tim Curry who is actually Slanesh. Legend also because of Tim Curry, who plays a demon that wants to rule the world and gets the hots for a princess. Caligula the movie written by Gore Vidal for copious amounts of sex, incest and Malcolm McDowell who Slanesh is scouting out as a future chaos champion. Eyes wide shut. Slanesh has heard the film described as just artsy porn, but doesn't get the criticism. It's art and it's porn. 
What's Not To Love, Event Horizon A documentary of how he shit is directly responsible for fucking up humanity's first venture into the war. High rise some say it holds the essence of the one time Slanesh and Kane got jiggy with it. Slanesh enjoys the song of ice and fire books due to the copious amounts of incest and midget sex in the TV adaption Game of Thrones because they added sex scenes and casting several porn stars on top of this. Slanesh gets all the pussy, though arguably just as much if not more cock. Slanesh tried to seduce all of the remaining Cetan at once. Slanesh ended up getting the pleasure sensors in its brain lobotomized. S he got off on this. Slanesh found Captain Flash at so magnificent in Blackadder that he had created a demon prince in his image. Woof woof. Despite psychic powers supposedly being Sinch's specialty, Slanesh's tend to be the really cheesy ones. Third edition had a minor power called Siren, which forbids the caster from being shot at in the opponent's shooting phase it's just as broken as it sounds. Fourth edition has Lash of Submission, which the Chaos Marine tactics cover the usage of in a nutshell. GW admitted they didn't realize how good it turned out to be and it was the most used on demon princes even though the one eye from the required moss wasn't very useful. And what about 6th edition? While Steam Tian Sorcerers focus on winging the shit out of enemy with mediocre mind bullets and warp beams, Slanishy ones pack a whole lot of cheesy buffs and debuffs, which makes them so much better. Similar deal in fantasy, where Slanesh, some of the time, offers a better selection of magic than Siege. Slanesh is the only entity in existence who listens to the My Dad Wrote a Porno podcast purely for erotic purposes. He she cannot understand for the life of him her at why no one else finds cervix grabbing sexy. Still, he she at fat schlicks profit of this. Considering that Slanesh is about excess, there might be several other types of marines besides noise marines we don't know about. Smell marines, who use gases to do whatever they wish through people's noses, whether it be death, insanity, paralysis, suggestibility, seeing colors, and so on. Always permanent brain damage. This is a way to get Nurgle followers to convert. Sight marines, whose weapons create wondrously intricate bloom and color effects of equally detailed and aesthetically only to a branch of masochists masochists can't stand pleasing. This is a way to get corn followers to convert. Touch marines, who know the nervous system better than a Bene Gesserit, able to bring the mightiest warriors down with the right jab in the right spot, consumed with uncontrollable orgasms. Taste marines, think about the spiciest thing you've ever eaten. Now imagine that a million times stronger, we are talking exterminatus level of scovilles here. Literally melt your goddamn tongue off heat. It's like that only worse. They would use super pepper spray that can literally eat through armor. Also, a former Tsinch follower gone slanish would be incredibly dangerous. Tsinch followers understand indeterminism from a very distorted, cynical perspective and also see knowledge as power per circumstance to win where force, charisma and economics cannot. A devout slanish seeks to experience everything. Thus a former Tsinchian, already well read on enough to convince themselves they experienced it, or well read enough to steal people's experiences. Who became a hedonist addict as well would be left with one desire. To be omnipotent and thus be able to go beyond the limits of mortal imaginings in pursuit of understanding and experience for the sake of understanding and experience. Slanesh tried to get in Korn's head by seeking to understand the appeal of skulls. Instead Slanesh got bored and invented the idea of skull fucking. Damn it Slanesh what the hell did you do to my skull throne this is disgusting. It's everywhere. It's sizzing out of every eye socket. I'm never going to be able to sit on that again Rana. Korn secretly loves it when Slanesh does this, because now he has even more of an excuse to go out and collect enough skulls to replace it. Slanesh patrols will skull fuck your family. Slanesh secretly wants Korn. S he's upset that the special K hates her him it. Slanesh is the only possible trap that is not gay. Slanesh is the only thing of which the rule 63 doesn't apply. However, if Slanesh ever did create a copy of him her there itself, then the two would immediately try to murder fuck each other in a kinky simulacrum of Highlander. This would apply to all of the main ruinous powers, apart from including Nurkel, who would simply hug his who's female double and then get to work with said double on a particularly virulent strain of Super AIDS crotch rot, would get jealous of Isha and conspire with Slanesh to get rid of that home wrecking skank. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This... this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This... this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. 
and it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please? 